What if the world's greatest genius own nothing but a suitcase? No house, no car, not even a permanent address, just a worn out suitcase, a passport, and a mind that could outthink entire universities. This is the story of Paul Erds, the wandering mathematician who saw numbers not as tools, but as living, breathing companions, a man who sacrificed everything, comfort, stability, even family, to chase the hidden truths of the universe. Paul Erds was born in 1913 in Budapest, Hungary, into a world on the edge of collapse. War loomed on the horizon, poverty spread like wildfire, and yet, in the middle of this chaos, a tiny boy stared at numbers like they were stars. At age 3, he could calculate three-digit multiplication in his head. At age 4, he could tell you the ages of everyone he met simply by asking their birth year. To him, math wasn't something to be learned, it was something he could see. He once said numbers were like friends, each with their own personalities. Seven was wise. Two was quiet, primes were lonely, birds, Jewish by birth, fled to England, then to the United States, carrying nothing but his brilliance. He arrived with no plan, no possessions, and quickly stunned the world of mathematics. His mind moved at lightning speed, jumping across number theory, combinatorics, set theory, graph theory, fields other mathematicians spent lifetimes in. Erds would enter, solve a problem that had stood for decades, and then vanish like a ghost. They called him the mathematical magician, but what truly made Erds extraordinary wasn't just his genius, it was how he lived. He had no home, he never married, never owned property, never even cooked his own meals. Instead, he became a mathematical nomad. He wasn't chasing fame. He wasn't chasing money, he was chasing truth. Two words, mathematics was not a career, it was a calling, a sacred quest. He believed that somewhere beyond the human mind was something he called the book. In this imaginary book, God had written the most elegant proofs of every mathematical truth. Erd said every mathematician's job was to glimpse just one of its pages. Whenever he saw a particularly beautiful proof, he would smile softly and whisper, this one is from the book. But even as his fame grew, Erd's remained an enigma. He gave away nearly all the prize money he earned, funding young mathematicians, paying for their travel, offering Erd's prizes for anyone who solved the problems he posed. He had no interest in wealth or possessions. He lived for collaboration, for discovery, for connection through ideas, and that connection became legendary. Over his lifetime, Paul Erds published more than 1,500 papers, more than any other mathematician in history. He worked with over 500 collaborators, so many, in fact, that mathematicians invented a concept called the Erds number. If you wrote a paper with Erds, your Erds number was 1. If you wrote a paper with someone who worked with Erds, your number was 2, and so on. It became a badge of honor in the world of mathematics. Everyone wanted an Erds number. Because working with him wasn't just a collaboration. It was like touching living lightning. Yet behind the humor, the brilliance, the chaos, there was something haunting about Paul Erds. He had no roots, no place to return to. He once admitted he didn't understand human relationships, that numbers were easier than people. And maybe that's what made him so extraordinary. In the 1980s, as age caught up to him, his body slowed, but his mind never did. He would still burst into colleagues' homes, saying, My brain is open, and, and work until his hands trembled. In 1996, at the age of 83, Paul Erds collapsed at a conference in Warsaw, pen still in hand, working on a mathematics problem. Even in his final moment, he died doing math. And when he was gone, the world felt strangely quieter. This man who had no home had somehow become a home for thousands of minds. He showed us that mathematics wasn't cold or lifeless. It was a living, breathing web of ideas that could connect people across borders, languages, and generations if his story moved you. If you believe stories like this deserve to be remembered, then subscribe to this channel.